Amen, amen, amen. I truly thank God, amen. I, I truly thank God for every one of you who are here with us. And I do believe that this is a day and time that we must continue to awake from our sleep, that we must awake from the dead, that we must live as if we know what God is doing in our lives. There was, yesterday, um, there was a guy who I know that it was almost like a back and forth tussle with whether or not somebody evil doing evil work is worse than a woman having an unborn child and having an abortion. And they begin to argue back and forth to say which one is worse. I mean, picture that, y'all. They're talking about whether or not somebody on the street who's about to go rob somebody is actually worse than whether or not a woman could have an abortion. And I thank God for his mercy and his grace for each one of us. But I jumped into the conversation and basically told them that they're both the same because God loves the person who's committing a heinous crime just as much as he loves an innocent child that he knew before they were even conceived in the mother's womb. So it, it takes for us to come to a place that we understand that that God is alive, y'all, and God wants to reveal himself through us, to us, to us, through us, to me, through me. God wants to reveal himself to me and then through me. It's one thing to get salvation to me where I receive salvation, but then to get salvation through me where others can be saved as a result of my life and the revelation that God gives me. This is something that cannot be on accident. This is something that has got to be purposeful. Something that's thought out. This, this takes a strategy to be able to say, you know what, this is what God is expecting out of me. And, and how do we put strategies together? How do, we, how do we put plays together on a field? You know, coaches design plays because the play is designed to either get us closer to the end zone, to get us closer to the goal so that we can score. Yo, we're not running plays so that we can run backwards. We're not running plays so we can fail. Yo, us coming together, getting into the word of God is not a strategy to fail. This is a strategy so we can push forward. This is a strategy so even though we understand that there is an enemy line that's set against us and they're trying to push us backwards, our job is to push forward. And then we come up with strategies and plays to say, okay, I need you to run through this gap. I need this particular player to come from this side of the field to this side so that we can begin to push to the other side. And what has to happen, y'all, in the midst of running the plays, sometimes the coach says, wait a minute, this is not working the way I want it to because it would be better. Another offensive coordinator may come along and say, you know what, if you bring the offensive tackle over here, it would be better than just the running back. And everything we do, now we begin to prove this. It's, it's one thing to say, I believe this is going to work, but it's something else to say, I'm about to prove it. Yo, we living in a life right now where we got to prove what's happening. Just like that song, I love that song because the song is basically singing about all the stuff that we call love, but then we realize this ain't love. Don't you realize that even people who are gang members, would say that they love each other. And they love a lot of times is, is, is based on as long as you do what I want you to do, I love you. The, the, the enemy don't have a problem with playing with that word love. We get manipulated by love. We get controlled by what the world says is love. And we're supposed to think that that makes me feel like I'm something different. Don't you know how many men are telling women they love them just so that they can sleep with them? And then they find out that the man don't even care about them after. And you're like, wait a minute, this ain't love. Because if you love me, you're going to be unconditionally with me regardless of what takes place. If a father tells his son to do something wrong... And if the son chooses not to do it, and if the father all of a sudden decides not to love the child anymore, that's not love. A parent understands that their child is going to grow up and have to make their own decisions. 
A parent understands that sometimes I got to take my hands off of you, but I ain't taking my love off of you. Because I understand that there's certain things that you're going to have to just go through. One of the things, y'all, even with us coming back, y'all, because we hadn't been in the building for over a month now. And for us to come back, I believe it's so very important that we understand we're not coming back into the building for a game. We're we coming back to go harder than we were before. We're coming back to get even more serious. This ain't about trying to get anybody to be so afraid. And y'all, and I thank y'all for coming in and wearing your mask. But if anybody, you know, needs to take a quick break and pull it off your nose, ain't nobody going to look at you crazy. I'm telling you because I really do believe that God is raising up a people that will be able to adjust and recognize who they are in the face of any type of obstacle, anything that's going on. And I truly believe, hallelujah. That God will set a hedge around us. Everybody just take a moment. Just take a moment everybody. And just begin to declare. Lord I really do believe you have hedged me in. Like just know anything can happen to me. Hallelujah. I believe I'm guarded. I believe that I am protected. Hallelujah. He says that he will keep me from danger seen. As well as unseen. I choose not to. Everybody say I choose not to walk in fear. Yeah, we're going to have wisdom, but I will not walk in fear. I, choose I will not walk in fear. Praise the Lord. What we're going to talk about just for a little bit today, y'all, right before we get out of here, is prove it. Prove it. Y'all, we living in a day and time right now, y'all, where when you're talking about you believe in God, you're going to have the world that's going to tell you more than anything. Why are you believing God? You think God is real? Man, that's a white man religion. You're going to have people telling you all kinds of stuff. And what's got to happen is the fortitude that you have to be able to stand against those that would challenge you will be based on your understanding, based on your personal experience that you have with God. If what you have is very weak and, and unstable, it's not going to take that much challenge to make you all of a sudden go from one doctrine to another. They got people that's claiming religious beliefs at five, five different ones at one time. Oh yeah, that sounds good too. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm Rastafarian too because I believe in smoking weed. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I, I claim Muslim too because I believe that, you know, Allah is the most high. And next thing you know, you don't even know what you believe. You bouncing around to everything that you hear. And the scripture says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So that means that in order for us to truly take a stand, we must understand. We got to understand. Everybody say, Lord, grant me understanding. Hallelujah. Y'all, let's go to uh, Ephesians 5. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's go to verse number, we're going to go verse number 10, and then we're going to do verse number 17. I'm going to ask uh, Minister Gio, could you read that verse number 10 for me, man? Verse number 10, hallelujah. And try to learn in your experience what is pleasing to the Lord. Let your lives be constant proof of what is most acceptable to him. Oh boy, hallelujah. Muamba, let me get you to read that same verse. Verse number 10. Yes, sir. And find out what pleases the Lord. That's all of it, Mom? This, yeah, that's it. Mine says, and find out what pleases the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me get, uh, Brother Shaman, can you read that for me too, man? Read it loud, bro. Verse number 10. Hallelujah. Everybody says it's time to prove it. Y'all, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all something. There's going to be people that's going to offer and tell you and suggest that you do a bunch of things before you get involved with it. You need to prove what it is. Yeah. What is the outcome of it? If I do this, I know you're telling me it's harmless. But what is the outcome of it? I must prove it. Now watch this, y'all. We're going to deal with this verse 
up until this one other person, uh, Brother Terrence, once you drop, he could hear you as well. Verse number 17. Good. Praise the Lord. Um, wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Hallelujah. Bosco, won't you read that same one? Verse number 17, man. All right, all right, all right. Wherefore, be you not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. So, so wait a minute, y'all. If we're trying to walk in wisdom, wisdom is connected to knowing what's God's purpose. Are y'all hearing this? The scripture says, be not unwise. If the enemy begins to make you believe that the wisdom in the kingdom of God is a waste of time, you're literally trading your wisdom for something earthly, something sensual, something that's not going to help you, something that's wasting your time, something that's leading you into a dark alley, something that's making you close a door when there's bright light coming into the room. But if you have no windows and, and the light is not on in the room, but if you have light coming from the door, if you begin to close the door, eventually the light that's coming in the room will go out. Just because it may not cause the light to go absolutely out, is the action causing the door to come closer? Yeah. And eventually you got a little bit of skinny line of light coming through until one more act of effort to close it is complete black. Some of us are playing around with actions that it looked like it's not doing anything, y'all, but it's just like every day we see the sun going down. Have y'all ever looked at the sunset? And when you look at it, it looked like it would just stay like that for the next 10 hours. And next thing you know, five minutes go by and it's a little bit lower than where it was. Yo, this is what sin does. Sin comes in and very, very stealthily like a snake. Can you imagine how can snakes live when they look like they move so slow? How can they catch their prey? It's because their, their movement is so designed to where it looks like they're not even moving. And they're constantly getting closer to you. Sin is trying to capture you and it's not trying to look like a road one runner in some cases. In a lot of cases, it's like a snake that's coming so close to you and you don't even realize that just because the head is in the same place, the rest of the body is coming closer to you. So by the time the snake reaches, it can reach and it can attack in a way that if you, you misunderstood it. You thought it wasn't moving. You thought it was no danger. And before you realize it, that same snake is looking at you while the rest of his body is contracting on you, squeezing your life out of you. Y'all, we must understand what is the purpose of God. The Bible says don't be unwise. When we unwise, y'all, it's like we let the snake slither around us and we say, oh, that tickles a little bit. And you don't realize the snake is not trying to tickle you. A snake is trying to contract, constrict on you. When you go to different areas, I don't care what kind of environment you're in, if that environment is enticing you into sin, you better believe, you better start visualizing snakes. You better start visualizing some type of stealthy attack coming against you. That's why when Cain was upset with his brother Abel, the Lord had to speak to Cain and say, if you do well, You'll be blessed too. But if not, I need you to know that a sin is crouching right at the door. That word crouching, when he says sin lying at the door, that's literally a word that's like saying Mariah, that's like saying that the way a tiger, before it attacks, it looked like it's lying down, but it's actually getting into a position where it's going to have the most spring in its muscles to where it can pounce on something. It's almost like an arrow being pulled back as far as it can go. And when you let that arrow go, it's going to go to the furthest distance that it can possibly reach based on the tension that was put on it. 
Y'all, they got some sins, they got some things, y'all, that's trying to attack us. And you, we, underestimate the amount of teaching that's been put on that sin. We look at it like it's going slow. No, it's only going slow because now it's at the furthest tension and they're just waiting to release it, but they can't release until you get in a position to where it's going to hit the target. And God is trying to keep us. God is trying to prepare us. Y'all, we live around people that's constantly playing around with sin and playing. Man, when I look at my life and remember the stuff that I used to do when I was growing up, man, I was playing around with fire, playing around with so much danger. And for me to look back and say the reason why God kept me, it had to be because of his grace. Because I put myself in a line of danger. I played with the snakes. What kept me from being choked out? His grace. So that means that we have to live now like we must warn people. Just like uh, Minister Cola said, everybody ain't gonna live to get old. We got people dying at young ages. I just buried one of my best friends that's only a year older than me had to go to the city and preach his eulogy. You don't have the time that you think you have. There is an enemy that's literally plotting and planning against you. The scripture says, be not unwise. Hallelujah. But you better understand what the will of the Lord is. How do I know? How do I understand what the will of the Lord is? Like, like is it all right for me to go to this place? Is it all right for me to go to a house? Is it all right for me to be in the living room but not the bedroom? How, how do I know? How do I know what's acceptable? The Bible says, prove it. Yeah. Prove it. Do you find yourself getting stronger? Do you find yourself getting closer to me? Or are you getting closer to it? <laughs> do you find yourself wanting to pray more? Or are you feeling like if you do pray, it's going to cramp your style? Yeah. It's going to stop what's going on. Now, God says prove it. So look, y'all. The scripture says, be not, everybody say, I choose not to be unwise. I will understand what the will of the Lord is. So look, so in order for us to get to 17, let's go back to verse number 10. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Amen. Yo, we got to be, everybody just begin to ask God to give you confidence and boldness and courage. Because sometimes you're going to find out that the one that's telling you they love you, you're going to prove that they don't. Sometimes the one that's telling you that they care about you, you're going to prove that they don't. We can't be afraid of proving it. How do we prove it? Watch this. Verse number 11. Praise the Lord. Brother Elijah, you still there, man? Our sister Kenya, you there? Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Elijah, can you read that verse number 11, man? Watch this, y'all. Ephesians 5, verse 11. Yes. Okay. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, or rather expose them. Ooh, y'all see that? Y'all, y'all see that? This is how we prove what is, is acceptable to God. Minister Scola, read that same verse, man. Verse 11. Ephesians 5 11 have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. So look, so even though he's telling us not to have anything to do, with those things that's wasting our time? He said, just because you have nothing to do with it is not good enough. Once you realize it's a waste of time, God says, expose it. Like in other words, don't say, man, it don't look like nothing wrong. If I did that, I could tell it would get me in a trap, but I'm gonna turn my eye to it. No, God says, if you know it's gonna waste your time, put the light on it. Expose that thing. Come on, y'all, how many times we did things and we thought it was going to be innocent and we look back and say, man, I shouldn't have did that. That wasted my time. That was wicked. God says, once you come to that, listen to this, when you come to that understanding, God says, expose it. If you cannot expose it, it reveals the lack of love and commitment we have to him. Because now we get to a place where we start being afraid of what kind of backlash I'm going to get if I put the light on that. I know they like that. I know they want to deal with that. But if I put the light on it, 
everybody going to start looking at me. See, our obedience now has to be connected to the fact that we know that we're not alone. You got to know that if God is for you, yo, yo, if we don't understand what that means to have God for you, we're going to be focused on them being against us. But the scripture says, if God be for you, it don't matter who's against you. Because sometimes when you think you're shining a light on a particular action, you wind up finding out that everybody that partakes in that action, they're going to feel like you're putting the light on them. Like you're putting them on blast. The Bible says, okay, prove what is acceptable to, to the Lord. How do I do that? Have, did it say have a little bit of fellowship? No. No fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. So wait a minute. What if it's fruitful works of the light? What if it's fruitful works of the light? God says, get involved. Learn. Submit yourself to it. Grow from it. Ain't no such thing as getting too much of the gospel. Ain't no such thing as praying too much. It says, but have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Hallelujah. Me and Sister Alice got a chance to talk a long time yesterday. And here's that scripture you quoted right here, Sister Alice. Uh, let me get, uh, let me see. Hey, Miles, I see you here, Miles. Are you in a position, Miles, where you can read the scripture, man? <laughs> Hallelujah. Sister Kenya, glory to your name. Yeah, I can read it. Praise can the Lord. Read? Yeah, Miles, read verse number 12. What book was it again? Ephesians 5 and 12. Okay. Ephesians 5 and 12. Read me now. For it is a disgraceful even to mention the things that such people practice in secret. Hallelujah. Scripture says it's a shame just to even talk about some of the things that's done in secret. That means, y'all listen to how holy God is. God says he don't even want his children to make mention that's too dark. That shouldn't even be talked about amongst you. Y'all, we doing a whole lot more than talking about it. We doing it. And God says we should get to a place where we shouldn't even be talking about it. Because we far from it. You know why? Because we got the doors open so wide. You know, it's almost like during the summer or spring, when, when, when you're doing spring cleaning and, and, and it's cool outside, it's not too hot, and sometimes we say, open up the windows. You know, let, let the light from outside come in. Shut the light off in the house. And just raise the curtains. And, you know, just do all these different things. And God says, when you come to a place where you can understand that his presence is there, God says, invite more of me in. You know, it's one thing to be able to do it in a family room, but wait a minute, wait, I got, I got windows, I got windows in my game room too, let me go raise up all the blinds, and before you realize it, you can shut off all the lights in the house, but there's so much brightness from outside, we let all of it come into the house. When you begin to surround yourself with people who are seeking God, you get to a place that you start saying, wait a minute, I'm going to let the light in when I'm on my job. Hallelujah. I'm going to let the light in when I'm on my phone and when I'm talking to my friends. When I go to the basketball court, Frenchie, when I get out there, I'm going to let the light come in. And guess what, y'all? We got to understand that this is a battle. Whenever you let the light in, you're going to find those that oppose the light. They're going to have a problem with it. And the scripture says, let your light so shine. Like in other words, don't you let nothing or nobody stop you from shining in light. Look at how effective the world is, y'all. The world gets the people of God to compromise every day because we allow them to minimize, hallelujah, the fact that the door is only closing a little bit, but you still got a whole lot of light. It's just a little bit. You know, and next thing you know, we cater in rather than talking to certain friends, and rather than closing the door a little bit, Jaleel, how about we start opening the door wider 
to let more light come in. If I partake in this particular action, will it help me to spread the gospel even more? Trust me, y'all know people that will say, yeah, I think that it's okay, you know, to smoke a little bit and then share the gospel or whatever. But my thing is, rather than indulging in it, how about I just expose to you that I've done it before? Because if I choose to indulge in it, I still don't have the proof that you're going to want to change if you see me doing the same thing you're doing. But guess what? I just let them make me close my door a little bit and I don't have as much light as I had before I started connecting with you. And now I'm walking away saying, man, I, would, I wish I would have opened the door even more. So God says, you got to expose it. For it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done to them in secret. But watch this, verse number 13. Lady J. Baby, can you read verse 13, please? Hallelujah. Minister Gio, read that from that Amplifier, man. Verse number 13. But when anything is exposed and reproved by the light, it is made visible and clear. And when everything is visible and clear, there is light. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. So you know what that's saying, y'all? That's saying that we're not going to have no shadows. We're trying to make it all bright. If, if there's shadows, that means there's room for doubt. If there's shadows, that means there's room for disbelief. There's shadows to make us believe, well, it's, you know, 50-50. God says, no, let the light of the gospel shine on it, and now it's going to be made manifest to everybody. God says that we should have the tongue of the learned, that no matter what we speak, people will understand what's being said coming through us, and that they will not even be able to challenge the word that you're speaking because you're standing on a solid foundation. God has so much giftedness and so much word and so much seed on the inside of us, danger. It's time for us to begin to let that seed and let that light grow. Because guess what? No matter how good a seed is, you're not going to start seeing the benefit of that seed until it breaks the dirt. It only can stay in darkness for so long. You start seeing a manifestation of what was planted as soon as the dirt is broken. And before you realize it, not only does it come out the dirt, but guess what? It's a whole nother level when the fruit starts showing up. Some of us should be bearing fruit right now. We should do more than just talking about it and reading it. We need to be doing it. If you have a conviction in your spirit, don't let nobody close your door. How do I know if my door is closing? Prove it. Are you getting closer to it? Are you talking about it more? Like at one point you talked about it like you, you had a serious conviction about it and now you're talking about it like it ain't so bad. Guess what? Your door closed a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And look what he says in verse number 14. Verse number 14. Hallelujah. Bosco, why don't you go ahead and read verse 14 for me, man? Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Wherefore he said, Awake those that seek us and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee the light. Hallelujah. Y'all see that? Amen. Everybody said, Lord, help me to wake up. Y'all, we, 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 we could be awake, going to work, going to practice. And still sleep. Still sleep. We could be going to the store and still doing it like we dead. I mean, when you dead, y'all, a dead man could be led anywhere. Somebody that have no conscience, no conviction, they just, you know, they numb to everything. And God says, awake, wake up you asleep. He says, arise from the dead. And guess what? God says, wait a minute. Oh, I got another one. Starting to show signs of life. Bring the defibrillator to him. Bring the word to him. Bring the 
words on. Let me let them know why they're starting to feel uneasy. Let me let them know why all of a sudden they don't have the same conviction that they had before. Let me let them know why even though they're in that same relationship, even though they're still dealing with that person that's married, let me let them see why all of a sudden at one point for the past six months it didn't matter what you was doing, but now it's starting to bother you. Clear? Give them the word. I say, speak the word to them. He says, time for you to wake up. Arise from the dead. And Christ will give you even more light. Like in other words, Christ ain't trying to close the door on you. Christ ain't trying to close the door slowly. Christ is not like a serpent that's trying to get close to you to get your life out of you. Christ said, I've come that I might give you life. Praise the Lord. And look, y'all, as we get ready to close out, verse number 15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, but not as fools. Y'all, how many of us are walking like fools? Yeah. Based on the word of God. I'm tired of walking like a fool. I want to walk like somebody who's wise. Based on what the word of God says. Don't you, can y'all, can everyone admit that it is extremely attractive to be around somebody who look like they're fearless? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You looking at them like, you ain't afraid to do that? Right, right, right. Man, let me tell you something, I got my son Josiah. They could be big dogs, I'm talking about Rottweilers, pit bulls, and I hesitate, ooh, that boy look like he ain't playing. <laughs> <laughs> and my son, would just walk up and say, oh, come here, boy, and the dog would just melt. I'm like, come here, boy. I'm like, dang. Why well, I didn't see that animal looking harmless, y'all. God want us to be like that concerning his mission. Yeah. Some people, don't, don't share the gospel to him. Man, that, that boy, he, he look like he gonna come at you with something. Yeah. And then somebody else come along and say, man, let me tell you what God did for me. Let me tell you what I know God is gonna do for you. And all of a sudden, the person next to them is like, man, I've been saved for so long, and why, why am I limited by fear? Yeah. Yo, because the scripture says Christ will give you light. Mm. Whatever there is hesitation, fear, is because something needs to be exposed. Mm. When it's been exposed, that's what the Bible says, perfect love. Casting out all fear. If there's anything you're still afraid of, you're going to ask God to perfect his love in you. Amen. And the more love you let in, guess what? Because love is light. Love ain't darkness. That means that you open the door more and you let more love and you let more light in. Praise the Lord. Because all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever do it make manifest, if it makes it to where we all can see it, it's light. Something that came to expose, it's something that came to, exprove, to, to prove. Wherefore he said, awake you that sleep and arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See that you walk circumspectly, like, in other words, don't walk like you staggering. Look how people walk when they're drunk and when they're loaded. They start walking on with a little, little limp, you know, like trying to be careful because if somebody push them over, they're walking trying to keep their balance. The scripture says the people of God are supposed to walk strong and bold. Somebody push you and they fall back because they didn't realize that you were walking with an established foundation. Almost like we're walking like we expect somebody to push us. I remember one time I was playing basketball on the court, Terrence, and I didn't realize I was chasing my defender, but I didn't realize about how, how effective the pick it is. If you don't know, you're about to get picked. And I remember I tried to cut through, and one of the guys stood there as a pick, and he positioned himself in such a way when I hit that boy, I fell out on the ground. <laughs> I'm serious, bro, this is real. So guess what? After that happened, 
I said, I understood what he did. So every time I ran to guard my man, I'm running with a greater tenacity. And I'm expecting if somebody try to pick me, I'm expecting to run through them now. Why? Because I understand. If I don't understand, I'm gonna be, I don't, I don't like falling on the ground, y'all. I don't like being that. That kind of looks foolish when you laying down on your back. You just got knocked down by saying they, they standing up over you smiling like, yeah, you can't see me right here. Huh? <laughs> That's what the enemy does to us. The enemy is like, yeah, you ain't, you ain't know this is a trap, huh? but I got you. You ain't know. You ain't know I was setting you up. And you like, you like, I didn't even see you coming. He like, I know. You weren't supposed to see me coming. That's why it's called a trap. All I wanted you to do was just have a couple of drinks, but you didn't realize it was a trap. I got that girl to come speak to you, wondering how this girl is so pretty talking to me, and you ain't even realize it was a trap. That's why I say walk circumspectly. That means you always got your head on a swivel. You always paying attention to what's going on around you. Don't ever get caught when you're so caught up in your cell phone that you can't even tell who's around you, who's following you. Get so caught up you don't even know what's going on. I'm driving back from New Orleans yesterday and I noticed a black Durango. Nice. I'm like, man, it didn't been some miles, and when I get over, he get over. I turn right, he turn right. I'm starting to wonder in my mind, like, is this cat following me? Next thing you know, I wind up speeding up, and I got in front of some other people, and I start to say, okay, I don't see him no more. All right. Yo, if, if you so sidetracked, you ain't even paying attention to who's following you. Don't you know we used to hear in the old back, back in the day that sometimes you don't even go home the same way every day. Certain things that you got to know how to change up. Because you don't know who's trying to bait the fact that you're so predictable. Mm. Yeah. That's why the Bible says, walk circumspectly like you always paying attention to who's paying attention to you. You're not a fool. Everybody say, I'm not a fool. I'm not a fool. Wise. Boy, this is, this is the one right here for me, y'all. When you begin to follow and obey God. Verse number 16, Brother Daniel. Danny, man, you there? Can you read verse 16 for me, man? Hallelujah. So. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Take advantage of every opportunity because these are evil times. Y'all see that? What you think that means to you, Daniel? Um, I think we just have to take advantage of every opportunity that we have to grow and to, to become closer to God and to be obedient to his instruction. There's so many different things in the society around us that can easily allow us to fall into sin and uh, like um, see this way into our hearts to where we don't even know it's happening or understand that it's happening. So every opportunity that we get to radiate God's love from our heart and from our spirit, we should take advantage of it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Minister Gio, what is that saying to you, man? That's saying to me that God is, God is telling us to take advantage of this, take advantage of the light of Christ, you know, take advantage of being able to hear the word, you know, because not everybody can hear the word of God, you know, not everybody is allowed to hear the word of God, you know, in different countries, it's, a, it's against the law, and you know, they're yes, being sir. killed for it, so us as believers, even in the States, you know, we're, we're, we're freely able to listen and hear the word of God, you know, we're freely able to hold these type of gatherings, oh, you yeah. know, without being persecuted or without, you know, the military coming to try to attack us or shut us down and whatnot, you know, take advantage of being able to walk in the light because right now this world is extremely dark. Oh, yeah. You know, and you don't you don't get a lot of a lot of bright spots. Oh, yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, fellas. Minister uh, Sakula, what do you think that means, man? Uh, I just feel like <clears throat> kind of the same way. Uh, Speak a little bit louder because I want them to hear you. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I just, yeah, I just feel like the stuff that I already was saying kind of lines up. There we go. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I just feel like uh, when it comes down to our opportunity that we have to serve God and to be in his word, because I actually I was reminded of that time when we was at that snow cone shop, the little snow cone spot, and we, uh, Terrence started talking to this group of dudes, and you know, this, this group of dudes and females, and all of a sudden, he, you know, he was sharing the gospel with them. But then all of a sudden, uh, I offered to pray with him because I didn't get a chance to talk to him at all. But before they walked away, I asked if we could pray. So right there, that was us making an opportunity. Like the word tells us, uh, it says, uh, make, every make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Those kids probably, it, it ain't no telling if they was going to get another chance like that. You know, I ain't even never really had somebody offer to pray with me on the street like that. So for God to lead us to do that, that was us making the most of every opportunity. And there was one dude who it's like he didn't really want to receive. And then that was when pastor was like, sometimes spiritually, a person like, uh, can be unauthorized to receive the word. You know what I mean? Just like Gio just got done, Mr. Gio just got done saying, Sometimes you're not even allowed to hear the word, or you, like that. That's that's a bad place to be. But sometimes you you have to really not take for granted when you get a chance to hear his word, because the enemy definitely wants to uh, blockade your ears and, and and put barriers around you where you can't hear. You can only hear what the devil has to to show you and say, and uh, you can only hear what your culture has. To tell you, but you don't get to hear nothing about the word, yeah. you know. So, yeah, make the most. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, this is this is real good, y'all. This is real good, Lady J. Baby, you have anything about this one? You know, when I read the scriptures, I'm always breaking down word by word. That's just kind of how I am. But um, the scripture where it says, "Redeeming the time because the days are evil." Right before it tells us to walk circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise. And we know that the word mean, redeeming means to basically buy something back. So we have to begin to regain possession by paying what we need to pay, the price we need to pay to be wise. Understanding that if I walk as a fool, I'm not understanding that the days are evil. So redeeming that time, meaning doing whatever you need to do to pay the price to be wise so that you can understand what you need to do because the day is evil. So the Lord is basically warning us and, and, and pleading to us to please be wise. And we know that being wise is not easy, but we have to pay the price and do what we need to do in order to walk in wisdom. He's saying, I need you to think about what's happening here. Walk and pay close attention. And be wise and not a fool. Be willing to pay the price to be wise. Understanding the time that you're in that are there evil. And basically letting us know that that's the, if we begin to walk in that manner, we'll begin to reap the benefits of it. So... I think he said it in that manner that we have to understand it's not just something that comes on you. You got to pay the price to be wise. Praise the Lord. I want to, I want to tell y'all it's worth it. The price that we're paying is worth it. When he says redeeming the time, you got to look at everything that was said before this. When he says redeeming the time, he's going back to proving what's acceptable to God. When he's talking about redeeming the time, he's talking about have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but expose it. When he says redeem the time, he's talking about that it's a shame for us to even talk about certain things that are done in the darkness. 
He said, but everything that is exposed is exposed by the light. He's saying this to let us know that the way we redeem the time is when we awake from sleep. When we awake from living as if we're dead, like we don't have no sense, no conviction, no direction. Then he tells us to walk as wise, as people who have wisdom. And when we do that, the scripture says he'll begin to redeem the time that was stolen from you. Every time you have the boldness and the courage to walk as a child of light, God says, I'm redeeming and I'm restoring the years that was taken from you. He said, I have to redeem the time because the days are evil. And last verse, wherefore, don't be unwise. Now, let me tell you something. Being unwise can be attractive sometimes. Being unwise means it look like we could be sleeping around with so many different women and men. We could be, you know, coming up with scoring some, some licks on some money and some deals, you know. It, it, you know, being unwise looks like it pays off sometimes, y'all. I'm just being honest. It look like it's all good. It look like they're having all the fun. I mean, it's almost like saying saviors, sinners have all the success. That's what it looks like sometimes. But we got to walk as children who are wise. We're not fools. We're not easily intimidated. So we will not be unwise. But we understand what the will of the Lord is. Hallelujah. Knowing that God called us for such a time as this. Y'all, this is the time for us to prove it. Somebody try to get you to do something? Prove what the outcome is. Prove whether or not it's worth it or not. Prove it. Understand, let's adopt the lifestyle of proving it. You think it's good for you to have that attitude? Prove it. Think it's good for you to carry about the way you do when you go to the store? Prove it. Prove it. The way you talk to those women all the time, is that good? What's the outcome? Are you opening up the door to get more light? Or are you closing the door to shut out the light? Sometimes you're going to have to prove it even to those people real close to you. Sometimes you got to be able to take a stand to those people right who you love so much. Somebody tell me, what's the greatest commandment? Number one commandment. Love your... Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, it. mind, and strength. Love the Lord your God. With everything you have. And then the second commandment, which is equal to the first, is what? Love, love your neighbor. neighbor. Love thy neighbor as thyself. So if you really love that neighbor, do you want that neighbor to walk in darkness or light? And the only way that's going to keep you in light is to love God first above everything. Jesus, name. Come on, y'all. Let's all stand up. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this time. 